one thing that I've been wanting to talk about for some time. Uh, ever since DJ Moore said it earlier in the offseason, he was on the Up and Adam show. He said, we all eat. I feel like it's going to be a race to a thousand yards between the receivers in the room. So it should be amazing. Now, I hear this. And the one thing I think is he's saying that all three of them are going to get to a thousand yards. It's just a race on who gets there first. So now I go into the research here and I find out, well, this has only been done five times before. Are the Bears really going to do that in Caleb Williams' rookie season? When you looked up who the five were, what were mm -hmm. some of those trios, just out of curiosity? So, so the most recent one was in 2008. It was the Arizona Cardinals, and these are some good names. Anquan Bolden, Steve Breston, Larry Fitzgerald. I'll go over 1,000 yards. Steve Breston gets 1,000 yeah, yards. Yeah, I mean, Kurt, Kurt Warner was slinging it. Slinging it. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, and then you go back 2004, Marvin Harrison, Brandon Stokely, Reggie Wayne makes sense. Like those are yep. three elite. Wide what receivers. year was that? 2004. Obviously, that, this is this is surprising to me that the yeah. last time it happened was 2008, and then 2004 yeah. behind that with Peyton Manning in the passing era that we're in now. I mean, back then, you know, obviously Peyton Manning, Tom Brady really started to you know take the NFL to the next level, and the rules mm -hmm. were starting to change to protect the quarterback. But it's honestly kind of shocking with some of the numbers, even with Patrick Mahomes. I know he spreads the pill out a lot, but it's actually kind of shocking that you have to go as far back as 2008 that it, that it's happened. And you're saying five times, but not since 2008. Ever. To me, that surprises me, Nick. Yeah, it definitely does. And I wonder, too, with the evolution of the passing game, like obviously you're always going to incorporate your top wide receivers, but you just mentioned the Chiefs. Like, Travis Kelsey is now a part of this equation now too. Mm -hmm. Like there are tight ends going over a thousand, That's but fair. what I'm also thinking of with the bears, like obviously they have these high uh, goals for themselves, but if they're really aspiring to get a thousand for each one of those top wide receivers, who I think are all capable of doing that. I think we have to see with Rome, but where does that leave the rushing attack? Cause I don't think the bears are just all going to all of a sudden, yes, they have Caleb Williams just going to completely abandon what, Matt Eberflus likes to do. You have a defense that you should be able to lean on in certain games where you get a guy like DeAndre Swift and he can definitely add to the passing game. But it's just a lot that the ball needs to go around for these three, just these three wide receivers. What about Cole? Cole wants to eat too, man. Yeah. Cole's the guy well, that can, you know, gain yards as well. So to clarify though, Stephen, because I'm seeing you're yeah. saying in the chat that this does include tight it ends. Does. So it you're does saying include. so this list. That see, that's even more surprised me. It's I was to, yeah. right. So I was to assume that it didn't include tight ends. It did. So in fact, last season, since you brought it up that it's been so rare, it's really unusual. The San Francisco 49ers got very close and they would have done it, except for Debo Samuel missed two games. He ended the season with 892 receiving yards. George Kittle did get over a thousand receiving yards, as did Brandon Ayu. So they probably would have gotten there as well. Now, the other thing that you have to consider here. Now it's a 17 game season instead of 16. So it should be more likely as we, we carry on through the NFL than it was in prior years. But the fact that it's still only been done five times is just, it's just astounding. Shocking. It's shocking that Patrick Mahomes didn't do it. I mean, yeah. what year? What do you have? Like 6,000 yards one year? <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. You have Tyree Kill, who's definitely going to get it. You have Travis Kelsey, who's definitely going to get it. And you're telling me all of the other you know, 4,000 yards were spread out to eight different targets. It just goes to show you that that how potent their offense is in mm -hmm. the way that they're going to stretch you and throw it to so many different options. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously the Bears wide receiver group is top heavy, you know, in terms of depth. You're going to have Roma Dunze, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen getting the bulk of the targets. But then, yeah, you've got Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, and DeAndre Swift. So I guess ultimately to answer your question, do I think that all three will have 1,000 yards? No, I don't. I think Meatball Greg last year would have found a way to have all three of his top wide receiver targets get 1,000 yards. Yeah. And then you start to see the way the season plays out, and you try to – it kind of knocks you back to reality. You're like, oh, yeah. Because like when at this time last year when we were doing our season projections, I'll never forget it. Like we were like sitting there going, there's no way that Justin Fields is going to throw for 4,000 yards, maybe 3,500 yards. Yeah. But then the math wasn't mathing when we started 
calculating how many yards we thought each individual player was going to get. And so at the end of the day, there's only one football. You only get so many possessions. And so I, I just, as much as I would love to see 4,500 yards, three different guys getting a thousand yards, I don't see it being all that likely with all the different options they have on this team. Well, Guys, just the way you start looking at it. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, Steven. When you start looking at it, Caleb Williams, rookie year, if you have three receivers going for 1,000 yards, that's already 3,000-plus yards right there. And then you look at his over-under, it's like 34 and some change, 3,400 and change. Mm-hmm. That's pretty hard to do. And Cole Komet, he still has to eat. Gerald Everett didn't sign here to sit on the bench and watch everybody else yeah. do all the catching. DeAndre Swift is known for being a better receiving back than he is a rushing back. And you just start putting the numbers together. I don't think it's very likely either. Now, if this was the same team and this was Rome's third or fourth season, it would probably be a different discussion for me. And I'd say not only do I think it could happen, I'd, I'd almost expect it. Yeah, in rookie in his rookie season, it's hard to do. I see people like, is Nick distracted? I'm looking up the stats for that, <laughs> got for, that for that season for Patrick Mahomes. Only Travis Kelsey went over a thousand yards in that. Not 5, even tired. That's, great. That's crazy. No, How many so total in, yards for Mahomes? Yeah, so five thousand two hundred and fifty. Uh, Travis or Tyree Kill's not even on this twenty twenty two team. This is uh, Smith Schuster with nine hundred and thirty three yeah. receiving yards, and Valdez Scantling as a, the third guy with six hundred eighty seven. Like so, just that just goes to show you. Like how difficult it is, and even a guy is obviously talented as Patrick Mahomes. You have the lead guy in Travis Kelsey, but some of the other guys don't even All get right. there. So let's go back because 2008 was the last time, um, you know, with uh, Kurt Warner and before that Peyton Manning in 2004. But the most passing yards in a single season, Nick, look this up. 2013 Peyton Manning's 2013 year, he threw for 5,477 yards. With 55 touchdown passes, how the hell did they not have three guys with a thousand yards in that season? And, and this this exercise goes to show you just how hard it will be for the the Bears to kind of get to any kind of these insane numbers. That you know we we have to as excited as we are, we have to kind of take a step back with some of our expectations. Yeah, I found those stats for you, Greg. Demarius Thomas, uh, rest in peace, 1,430 yards. You had Eric Decker, 1,288 yards. And then you have Julius, Julius Thomas, Thomas okay, with 788 yards. Now, so, I think then, Julius Thomas had a bunch of touchdowns that year. They're like something, I know it was double digits, right? 12. Yeah, yeah he had 12 go. touchdowns. Wes Welker had the 778 yards. I forgot Wes Welker was on that team, to be completely honest. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, they were... They were flirting with you know a bunch of guys there, but still they didn't get those that trio with with a thousand each. It's it's a tough thing to do, and if Caleb Williams and his offense ever get to that mark, I mean, you see what what Peyton Manning five thousand five hundred seventy two yards. That's that's <laughs> ins- that's just video game types of numbers. That's and that's crazy. and that's where I think it's gonna lay out. I think that DJ Moore and Keenan Allen will have just over a thousand yards each. Maybe DJ ascends because his explosiveness and reliability and just, you know, his comfort with being on the bears Keenan, it's his first year year. I understand it's the first year in the offense for all of them, but I just think from a comfort standpoint, DJ will be ready to go. And his explosiveness speaks for itself. Keenan Allen, his route running ability, his trustworthiness. And I, and I know he's already building a good rapport with, um, you know, uh, Caleb Williams. So I think those two guys will find their way to a thousand yards one way or another, but Roma Dunes, a, you know, he's him and Caleb Williams are going to go through rookie struggles individually. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to have chemistry that they have to work through, you know, together, Mm -hmm. you know, as the season progresses. So I have him somewhere in the 800, 850 range is I think the most realistic, uh, possibility. Now, if you want to talk touchdowns, that's a totally different conversation, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and who's going to be the one to earn the trust of being the go-to guy when you get in the red zone that very well could be Roma Dunze as a guy that is known for taking 50, 50 balls and turning them into 80, 20 type, you know, uh, you know, conversations. That's what he prides himself as. So, you know, uh, anything goes in the red zone, but I think, you know, when you're trying to move in between the twenties, 
I think DJ and Keenan are going to eat up. Well, let me let me do a little math for you here, since Rome is kind of the question mark. I think we can agree on as the rookie coming in, trying to develop some chemistry with Caleb. I looked at the Seattle Seahawks from last season because Shane Waldron offense, mm-hmm. and yep. kind of kind of similarly, they had two alpha types and D- DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, and then there's the third. The, it's a rookie. It's Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, he won for 63 catches. And 628 yards. I think we all agree that Roma Dunze, better talent than Jackson Smith and Jigbo was coming in. Now, if he just averages four catches per game, Roma Dunze, that is, he'll get to 68 catches. Now, Braggs, do you think that Roma Dunze, with his jump ball ability, he says it's not 50-50, it's, it's better than that. It's closer to 100-0 than it is to 50-50, in my opinion. Do you think he could average 14.7 yards per catch this season? Um, yeah, I guess I, I could see that, but that's only because he may not get as many catches, right? He's not going to have 110 mm-hmm. catches. He'll have Agreed. what, you know, um, 60, 70 catches. Does that yeah, sound if, right? If, if, if I went with those numbers of 68 catches four per game seems very feasible and he averages 14.7 yards per catch, he does hit that 1000 yard mark. And when I put it like that, all of a sudden I can well, start talking I mean. myself into it a little bit. Well, that, and that's what happens, right, Nick? Mm-hmm. Like we do this every season. It's simple math, and <laughs> you, you, you're even when you're trying to be fair to the conversation and bring the numbers down to what you feel like is more realistic. It still averages out to a thousand yards for every receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, four thousand yards for your quarterback. But these, you know, before you know it, then the season's halfway through and you're not even close to these projections. Yeah. And look, it's each game. They're going to have specific game plans where they're just going to like the matchup that one guy has above the rest. And one guy could be the the main target that game. So we could do the math and it's like, oh, wait, that is really doable. I could see Rome getting the Mm -hmm. thousand. And then, like you said, Greg, you go halfway through the season, like, okay, it's probably not going to happen. But look at DJ eating, look at Keenan having his his game or whatever, as long as uh, Roma Dunze doesn't have a Jackson Smith Najigba moment when talking about Shane Waldron, I think we'll be good with how he's feeling about his, you know, offensive coordinator in his rookie season. As long as we don't have that, I think we'll be all right. And let's keep the record straight here, Matt Nagy, our resident troll here in the chat. <laughs> and we appreciate your loyalty to the show. And we appreciate you always keeping us honest. But you've got to be honest here, too. Because he's saying, remember last season when Braggs thought Fields was going to throw for 4,000 yards? Ha, 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 ha. Now, one, I did try to bet Carm that if Fields threw for 4,000 yards, he had to shave his mm-hmm. head. But what I said was, let's keep the record straight here, Nagy, that I had him around 3,200 passing yards and around 800 to 1,000 rushing yards. So it was if you were going to talk about the 4,000 yards, I saw my way to total yardage in that range, uh, but I was not saying throwing for 4,000 yards. So let's keep the record straight here, Matt Nagy, before we fire you from Chicago for a second time. Um, <laughs> So we'll have to wait and see. But, it, I mean, it just goes to show you, in general, just um, the excitement to watch this offense, the excitement to get to training camp and see this. I mean, if, you know, um, everybody that went to OTAs, yourself included, Nick, you know, saw Roma Dunze as, like, kind of this real deal, like, you know it when you see it. And I don't know if Nick is frozen right now or if he is just so He's just happy. so happy. So happy. He is- so happy nick is definitely frozen that is funny i was like he's i was like he's deep in thought while i'm talking to him but uh i'm sure he'll get his internet here figured out shortly but um you know adam hogue even said like hey guys you know roma dunze is the real deal i love hearing that you know um Mm -hmm. hearing hearing tremaine Edmonds the other day talk about caleb williams and what he was showing, Trevon Dexter echoing those sentiments. I mean, they're not going to come on our shows and bash these guys, but you know, um, some of the tea leaves, some of the little things you're hearing. I'm excited to see it for myself. Ultimately, um, you know, having gone to training camps for 20, 25 years, a lot of times it's a you know it when you see it. And when Alshon Jeffrey came to training camp, yeah, you could see the talent right away. And he was a second um, round pick. He was a second round pick and most bears fans were very excited. The second we drafted him because yeah. he was the big body, uh, 
high point type of receiver that they needed at that time. And when it, when you got to camp, that is exactly what he was doing. And you saw it and it translated. Brandon Marshall coming over from a trade. Okay, I, you could see the talent. And so I'm assuming when we get there with Roma Dunze, you're going to see that right away. And my hope is with Caleb Williams, I'm seeing something I've never seen before, which is going to be a little trickier for me to like identify because I've never, every time I try to, put my hopes into what I'm seeing with quarterback play, whether mm-hmm. all the way back to Rex Grossman and Kyle Orton. And then when Jay Cutler came in, there certainly was a difference in uh ball velocity placement, you know, size, you know, Jay Cutler had those things. Um, but when, you know, then, but then you're hoping those things with Mitch Trubisky and Justin Fields, like certain attributes of what makes a quarterback great. So in terms of quarterback play at camp, I'm hoping I see something I've never seen before. I hope that's the impression I take away the first few days of practice that we get to see. Well, you say you want to see something you've never seen before. So I'm kind of curious in all the camps that you've gone to, who is the quarterback that you'll say that was the best I've seen to this point? Like this is the guy he needs to be better than in camp at the very least. I, it's Jay Cutler without question. Okay. You know, I had different, I had mixed emotions and feelings regarding Jay through his tenure as a Bears quarterback. Mm-hmm. Initially, the first three, four years, I loved him. He was the mm-hmm. best, most talented quarterback I'd ever seen at camp. That was the most potent offenses I ever saw at camp, really testing a defense that had Hall of Famers across the board, albeit aging some of them at the time. So it kind of, you know, there was this cross in the road between the offense getting talented and younger and the defense starting to get older. Um, you know, and, and, and losing some of what they had early on, but yeah, I mean, there's jokes when Jay first came here, like you could hear the ball through the air, like yeah. zip through the air, but you legitimately could like you, mm-hmm. you saw the velocity and the ball placement and the bombs that they were throwing to Marshall, Jeffrey, Martellus Bennett, you know, Johnny Knox, even Devin Hester, Matt Forte, like they were, it was bombs away. And so that translated. So to me, you know, um, that that's what we're going to have to see. And even 2018, Mitch had his flaws, but that year at camp before we got Khalil Mack, they had Taylor Gabriel and, you know, Allen Robinson and Tariq Cohen and Trey Burton. And you saw an offense that was, you know, moving the ball all around. And it did translate during the season. You know, Mitch mm-hmm. was a flawed quarterback, but there was – you know, signs that that offense was going to be able to play a little bit. So Anthony Miller as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what we're hoping to see here this year. Nick is some of that level of talent, but uh, upper echelon in terms of the quarterback play. Yeah. And like arm strength is great and everything, but I mean, I, I love accuracy and layered throws and throwing over a linebacker in a window, those types of things. And that's what I'm going to be really paying attention to with Caleb and just the timing of things. Like we, we know he has an arm. He can get it out there in front of guys throwing deep, but if you can throw it in that tight window, which this league it's made, it's make or break. If you could do that, like that's going to be the, the thing that separates some of those other quarterbacks we've seen in camp that will really show that, Hey, Caleb, yeah, he's different. And I think we've already seen some of those throws already. And like defensive players have talked about it. But if we see that consistently, that's what's going to be the, the difference maker for me. We all silly like the mayor. 